reversing entropy. Why reversing entropy? And what does that have to do with being in the middle of a water reservoir paddling a kayak? Well, allow me to explain. You will not believe the stupidity of what I just did. I dropped my rappel device. It, it fell down there. In this trip, I try to make a ferrata. I try to take the um, kayak along with a tent and slip, sleep on an island. And I try and do a mountain bike uh, path around the whole reservoir that should be about 35k. I was born a long time ago. Perfect specimen. Pale skin, blonde, blue eyes, a statue-sized dick. I'm just kidding. Have a huge dick. Anyway, entropy affects us all. Affects us all. I'm I'm only that blue dot. I still have to go. I'm not even halfway. There's. Oh man. I almost want to go back. You got pissed off at everything and every single thing because you've seen it all. Nothing is new anymore, you know? And then you, you understand why people do what they do because you're old and wise and the world is starts being a, a kind of a shitty place sometimes. And then you get married, you get kids, you get a freaking couch and you get fat and life happens. And I guess that's what I call entropy. Uh, I left my clothes to dry. And you will not believe this. They are completely wet. That's because I'm an idiot. It turns out that you can actually reverse the effects of entropy. Not entropy itself, but the effects. And the cost is energy. You introduce energy into a system and you might be able to reverse entropy. So that's what I'm doing out here. It's about introducing energy to try and reverse the entropy that has happened to my body for the last 40 years. This is the view from where I spent the night. I got here at about 2 a.m. Had a nice dinner in an awesome restaurant and got myself a nice Airbnb. <laughs> Just kidding. I slept by the side of the road. So I wake up, I'm all cozy in there and I have to go to the bathroom. I really have to go and take a, 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 a pee, make pee pee. The problem is <laughs> I carry the kids in this car. So the back doors, they won't open from the inside, the back windows, they won't slide because the keys were not in the ignition and you can't do it from the back. There's no way to open the door from here. And I really, really had to go and going from the back part of the car to the front part of the car, I almost pissed myself and I got out of the car with my head coming down. Anyway, this is the Ferrata from the dam of Santa Luzia. That's the dam and it's, well, it's a dam, it's big, of course. And then the Ferrata goes up this, uh, the side of this massive wall. Now, almost all of it is at a, at an angle era and it's very challenging to do. Well, it was last time I was here. Last time, however, I weighed 10 more kilograms than I weigh now. And also the gear I'm taking with me is lighter. 
so that will help for sure. But I gotta tell you, man, my knees are shaking. Uh, you can just about see right here one of the climbs. You have a, you can see here the lifeline, and then right beside it, another one. And my, my body decided that everything hurts. My knees hurt, my back hurts, my arms are hurting. I guess it's like a defense mechanism or something. You knew when you're scared of something, of doing something, all of a sudden, everything hurts. Here we go. Ah. We are up in the first ledge. So far, so good. This is the easy part. So, in case you never seen a Via Fajata or don't exactly know what it is, here's how it works. You have your belt, your climbing belt, and you have this Fajata kit, which has two hooks on it. You get to a point where the lifeline is hooked, and you unhook one of them, but you still have the other one hooked and you hook it into the next portion. And then you do the same to the other one. So at no point in time during the ferrata are you supposed to be without a lifeline. So technically, it is very, very, very unlikely that you will tumble down the mountain. Now here's the problem. If I'm at this point and my hooks are on this lifeline, if I were to fall, there's nothing stopping the hooks until they get down there. And you hit the rock way before your, um, way before your uh, uh, security system is deployed. Enough talk, let's just climb. Here we go. We're all set up, we've got the tent, some stuff, then some more stuff, and then some stuff over here. And now we're going to move this stuff and find a place to sleep. Let's see if we can sleep on an island that we reached by kayak. That's the objective. I have been rowing for a while now. I don't know exactly how much time, but we're still pretty, pretty, pretty far away. But there's still a long way to go. I'm feeling some cramps from the Via Fejata. My arms are cramping up. I have to keep them mostly extended. If I bend them, they get locked into place. Situation update. Uh, we came from over there, that bend, and I think we're going over there. I still can't see the island, but I saw it on Google Maps. I know it must be around somewhere. Now, here's the thing that, uh, that future Paulo has to deal with it. By future Paulo, I mean tomorrow me. There is a current here. I'm clearly moving, albeit slowly, maybe half a knot, towards the island, which means I have been helped to go up this stream. And it's not the wind, so I don't understand why that would happen. Nevertheless, I am slowly moving. Which means tomorrow, I will have to fight the current. Well, we are now at the park where the bike trail starts. And I haven't even started, and it's going well. It's raining a little bit, and already I have a, a puncture somewhere. I guess it's here. God dang it. 
we are ready to go. Holy crap. Hey, shit. <sighs> Bit rocky and loose. However, very cool. Jeech. problem here is that I hit the pedal on the top side of the mountain, on the left side, when I'm pedaling because there's not enough space. So situation report. I managed to screw up this as well. Uh, the phone doesn't have a lot of battery so let me stop up here. Seems a good place to stop. So the phone didn't have a lot of battery. So I just put the course on my on my watch and there I go. Following the freaking map. Now there was just one issue. I was following the map the other way around. Well, anyway, I guess it's the same. The only I noticed it because it got to a point when I was climbing a very steep single track and I was thinking this would be awesome to go down, not to go up. And then I realized looking at the, the watch that it was sending me the other way. And the uh, place is awesome. Got what's going on over here? Oh, a little bridge. And some stairs. <laughs> nice. Well, see you later. We made it up to the second ledge. This was the ledge where I had to give up last time. Uh, today, it's going much better. I feel good, even though... You see, I'm looking... Wait a minute. I'm looking straight up, it's at an angle, you know, it goes like this. So you have to climb with the, all the force in your arms all the time. But yeah, let's see if I can make it this time. There's a, at least two more of these steep climbs. You see, the biggest problem is where you have to change the hooks, the other, there you have to just hold yourself with one hand because the other hand uh, is used to move the carabiner from one spot to the other. So that's what's tricky. If it was just climbing, I think it would, it would be much, it would be easier, but it wouldn't be safe, so. Jesus Christ, that was brutal. Holy crap. This part of the climb, oh my god, Whew. Whew. yeah, you can get a better sense of how high we are. That's a car, it's way down there, and we still have a lot to go, I think. Oh, at least there's a more, another with the overhang over there. I think I have, I bruised my, I think I bruised my from holding to the yeah you can't tell holy crap dude i don't know if i can make it i will tack it that one if it's if it hurts so much as this one i will turn back 
I will set up a rappel and I will go down. Jesus. Situation update. My arms hurt a lot. I've been at it for some time. Uh, this is nice. It's pretty. I, I can't believe this is here. It's available. It's legal. It's encouraged to do some, you know, sports. There's nobody around. There's no one. I found the island. Except there's a problem. It's not a freaking island anymore. So, this here is supposed to be an island, but because it's the end of summer and the water level is low, it's now a peninsula. Which means I didn't need a kayak to come here. I could have just walked and which means I get to fail at this too. How can you fail at sleeping on a night? Well, she doesn't exist. That's how you can fail. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go back a little bit. Yeah, there she is. She's a, a 2014 Scott Genius 120. Uh, she has a CTD, which is you control the suspension, whether you're climbing or technical trails or descending. She has a, um, a dropout uh, seat, so you can control the height of your uh, seat, whether you're climbing or descending again. Uh, she's carbon, but only in the front. In the back, she is um, she's alum aluminum or aluminium, that's how you say it correctly. And it's a Shimano group set. She's new to me. I bought it used because, you know, bikes these days, who can afford them? Anyway, she was good enough in 2014. Actually, she was great in 2014. She's great today. And so far, so good. She, she's, she's nice. She's nice to ride. Just thought I'd let you know about the, the bike, what kind of bike I'm using. So, the views are nice, but I gotta be honest, I don't really care about the views anymore. My arms hurt a lot, my legs hurt, my butt hurts, and here's the problem. I still pulled up the map in the phone, because you gotta have a few. I'm, I'm only that blue dot, I still have to go, I'm not even halfway. There's... Oh man, I almost want to go back. I am not in shape for this. I am really not. Should I go back? Yeah. Because, yeah, there's no roads over there. So I have to go on the other side of that hill over there. I gotta be on the other side of the hill. Let's see what's here on this side. Oh crap! It's another one. Well, it doesn't seem to be as much of an overhang as the... Uh, yeah, we're about in the middle. Of course there's gonna be another one. Ah oh, well, I'll just make a little break and then tackle that one. And I made it! From here on out, it's just walking. Woo! 
What do you think of that? For a reward view. We made it this time. Now, this afternoon, I'm kayaking from way over here, down that channel, onto an island that's up there. That's gonna be fun. Don't know if I'm gonna make that. <laughs> My arms are pretty tired. Now for the fun part. Let's rappel down. Woohoo! What, you thought I was gonna walk through the road like a schmuck? Yeah. We're gonna rappel down. Uh, then I have my petzel, and this is how it works. When you let go of the rope, it will allow you to slide through. But when you hold it, it, it will not allow you to, to move, to slide. I, I dropped my rappel device. It, it fell down there. <sighs> Uh, no, I don't know if I should go up. I'm kind of like halfway. It's a very cheap tent, but it, uh, no, it. Let me let me rephrase. You can buy a tent for like twenty bucks, but it's a very good, cheap tent. That's what I mean. We will have bolognese for dinner. Holy crap! Welcome to paradise. Enjoy and be happy. That's a good advice. I am scared because it's like this pejata is cursed. We have to go down there. <sighs> 